it's yours. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. I think I'll just sit it right here, maybe. Yeah. And see what you look like. Yeah, that's perfect. Yeah. I'm gonna turn that off so it's not. Yeah. So <laughs> at least it's nice and cool. Nobody knows it's gonna be live. We're probably not gonna do it. What? Get out of here. It's all good. I have no clue. Yeah, amongst us, friends and family. This is. I mean, we're not live. I think it's actually easier if you just forget that this. Yeah, we're not even. There's only ten people on. Eleven, twelve, seventy-five. Only 150 people on there. <laughs> you can do this, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the easy part. Yeah. All right, everybody, we're going to get started. Um, so we're we're just um, today for for practice purposes. Um, we we want to just go over um, what I used as a listing presentation for many many years. Um, I always tell people today I'm really lazy and I don't really do it like this all the time because I think as you grow in confidence and you grow in numbers, um, my coach would always say there's a new agent response, there's a top agent response, right? So a top agent like Miss April Stevens, who's in the room today, she could say, my team sold this many homes, we're going to do the same for you and boom, done, right? There's a top agent response. But a new agent like Miss Cush here, who's just got her license, yay! Um, she can't. She might not feel comfortable saying that because she might feel like she's lying. So she's got to figure out ways to get around that. So today, I just want to demonstrate, you know, that you can read words off a page and feel more confident. If and, and I'm going to show you guys how it looks. So if many of you have this, I don't know. You probably don't have it, but. I can, we can send it to everybody and, and put on, it's just a, a Mike Ferry um, script. That's what I've used for years. That was my coach for years. So when I learned to be more, um, I would say professional, and I, th these words gave me more confidence, my conversion went high, you know, it went much higher than it was. So the first seven years of my career, I was like anybody else. I just got my license and learned from the agents in the office and just went and built rapport with people. Um, talked about their shoes and their paint and their trophies and hope that they liked me and then I'd show them a few comps and that was it. That was my presentation. Um, and then when I realized that there were agents in my market that were running circles around me, especially one agent, um, her name was Bellino Guide, she, this lady, I mean, we were crashing in our market and she was selling homes left and right. She was getting price reductions. She would get all the expired listings and we were just like, what is she doing? Well, come to find out she also used this script. So you can hear it from 10 different people and it's going to sound different. And everybody feels like, well, I don't, we don't all want to run around using the same script the sellers don't remember. And you're not going to say it like me and I'm not going to say it like you. So it just doesn't matter. But what I want you all to know is that if you do memorize this, somebody like Kush could come into a listing now and feel very confident because she knows there's a process and she knows what to say. So for this little role play, um, you're going to be, Tommy's going to be my seller. And so he, his home expired. I think you said you were moving to Florida. Your wife was already there, mm -hmm. right? She's okay. there. You're right. here kind of wrapping things up. Yeah. She's the breadwinner. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so he called and he, he wanted to interview two or three agents. He listed with a friend the first time around, didn't work out. Um, and this home is in Lockmere. So what I'm going to do is demonstrate the pre-qualification script. And this is the script that I use before I go out on any appointment. And the goal is for me to just, A, sound professional, sound like I care, kind of like a nurse in a doctor's office. You're going to come in and take the vitals. And so I just kind of want to take his vitals and see what, you know, what he is going to object to as we talk. So, <clears throat> all right, ring, ring. Hello. Hi, I'm looking for Tommy. Yep, this is Tommy. Hey, Tommy, it's Tina Call. How are you today? I'm doing pretty good. How about yourself? Good, good. Hey, I know we got an appointment tomorrow at five, um, but there's just a few questions I need to ask you before I see you tomorrow. Is now a good time? Uh, yeah. Awesome. Well, you know, Tommy, if what I say makes sense and you feel comfortable and confident that I can list your home tomorrow, are you planning to go ahead and, and list the home with me? 
well, I've already interviewed one agent and then there'll be one after you. So um, probably not, you know, I want to hear what everybody has to say first. Perfect. So you've already interviewed one agent and then you've got one after that is awesome. And I think that is really, really good of you to interview many agents because we are all very different. So good for you. Um, and then tell me again, where are you moving to? I think you said Florida, yep, correct? That's correct. Awesome. And how soon do you have to be there? Well, it would have been nice to have the home already sold and be down there in Florida. Um, you know, ideally September, definitely by September. By September. Okay, perfect. And I think you mentioned yesterday your wife is already there. Yep, she is. Okay, perfect. I'm sure you want to get reunited quickly. Mm -hmm. Or maybe not. Maybe it's a vacation <laughs> for you. I don't know. <laughs> Good. Um, now, Tommy, when I see you, how much do you physically want to list your home for? I know you had it listed for five seventy-five. dollars Yeah, somewhere in that ballpark. You know, I mean, I want to try to get as much money out of it as possible. So, you know, somewhere in five seventy-five. dollars Okay, perfect. Well, as a professional real estate agent, I study homes and prices every single day. So I assume that you want to sell it at a price that will allow it to sell this time, correct? Yep. yep okay, perfect. Absolutely. So what price won't you go below on the property? Let's say you had an offer for, you know, five thirty-five. dollars Is that something you can even consider? Probably not. Um, I could see maybe five fifty-five somewhere around that number. Okay. You know, maybe cash. You know, quick closing date, that sort of thing. Maybe no inspection, something like that. But um, you know, as high as possible. Okay. Well, I'm going to definitely try to get you the highest number possible. So not a problem there. And I'm going to bring a net sheet with me um, so you can see what all the fees are and, and what you'll net after you sell the home. What do you owe on the property? Well, real quickly, as far as fees. Um, and what do I own the property? Roughly uh, four fifty. Four fifty, perfect. Well, there's a lot of equity. It sounds like I need to protect for you, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. And have you ever thought about selling it yourself? Uh, no, not at all. Oh, good for you. Um, will you help finance the buyer, or do you just want to cash out of the property? Yeah, definitely cash out. Okay, perfect. And will you just take a quick minute and describe the home for me? Um, yeah, I mean it's a nice home. We've loved it. Um, you know, when you get here, you can check it out, take a walk around. Uh, two-car garage, um, you know, nice backyard, uh, just, you know. Pretty, pretty nice home, it sounds yeah. like. And, and are there any updates or improvements that, that you did to the property that the buyer will appreciate? Uh, yeah, the roof. I mean, that's, uh, I think we have a new roof, and that's a big expense. Mm -hmm. So, you know, saving some money there for the potential buyer. That's great. That's great. Well, I'm going to be sending over a package of information, Tommy. That way we can spend a lot of time on you and not – not me, so will you take a few moments and review that package so you can learn all about us and our team? Uh, yeah, for sure. Wonderful. Do you have any questions for me before I see you tomorrow at five? Uh, no, not at all. Okay, perfect. Well, just so you know, our meeting should take anywhere between five and, and 25 minutes. Is that okay? Yep, that sounds great. Awesome, I look forward to seeing you tomorrow, Tommy. Bye-bye. 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 <laughs> That's it. All right, any questions on this as we, I'm chatting. Why did you ask him if he was, uh, if he thought about selling himself? Because I want to know if he's thinking for sale by owner, and then that prepares me with for sale by owner objections. Okay. And so that way I can start that process of showing, bringing stats with me that show him that selling it him, himself might be detrimental to his bottom line. Um, so it just prepares me. Okay. Just like, you know, when he was saying, um, you know, will you help finance the home for the buyer? You might have a seller that the home's paid for. And they're like, actually, yeah, we, you know, we were thinking about renting it. So now we're looking at rental scenario and selling. Yeah. Now I need to bring with me the whole rental scenario breakdown to say, do you really want to keep a 600, like we had this, Ashley, with your client. And I might just sell, rent my $625,000 home it's paid for. W would you buy a $625,000 home today and put it up for rent? No. And that's the question. Like, would, yeah. is this a, a good investment for you? So that weans out all the objections and then you can kind of be more prepared so they don't throw out this crazy, yeah. you know, I'm just going to rent it, mm -hmm. which they do that, don't they? Mm -hmm. I don't like this price. I'm going to rent it. I love that one. Yeah. Um, what are you setting up the day before and how are you doing it? So before when we weren't that busy, we were actually dropping off by courier, just our marketing package, just about us and all the fluff that you have. Now we just email them the same package because we're lazy and there's more sellers. So, And either way works. It's just kind of getting, you know, because I think a lot of agents, when they're at a listing appointment, all they're talking about is how great they are. And, and that's the, the competitive edge. I feel like if I'm going up against another agent, 
I'm really not talking about myself. I'm really focused on them, their goals. And we just, that part's like, okay, I've sold this many homes. But for an agent that hasn't, sending out a nice just pre-listing package with what the firm will do and all the fluff, that gets them out of talking about themselves, which is crucial when you don't have any sales. Like when I moved here, I didn't know a soul, so I didn't have any sales. So I had to try to beat out Sharon Evans. Um, you know, good luck. So not happening. All right, so that's the prequal. And, the, the, and then again, the other goal, if you guys saw, was um, finding out what their bottom line is. You know, how much are you willing to take on? What if you had an offer for this? Would you? Mm -hmm. It's just that conversation. They're always willing to tell you. Sometimes they might say, well, you know, I, you're the professional, so you tell me. Okay, but if in a perfect world, you know, what would you really, you ask it again. In a perfect world, I mean, really, what would you like to see? Oh, maybe 550, you know, whatever. So you can kind of have that, that conversation um, with them. So. All right, let me make sure. Oh, and then a lot of times they'll say, if I say, do you have any questions before I arrive? They might say, well, what's your commission? Well, that's a great question. In fact, that's the first thing we'll talk about. It really depends on me looking at the property. Because, you know, you might charge them 7 or 8% if the property's a dump and it needs a lot of work. I don't know. So, something we might do. <laughs> Not for. Um, so, that's a great way. And then you can write down that he's going to have a commission objection. So, all right. So, when we get to the property, the first thing you know I want to do is I kind of sit in the car and I kind of just go through some affirmations. That was really a positive thing for me because this is showtime. So you want to a look your best. You do not want to show up in flip flops and you know just not looking professional. And ladies, you know that means I always tell all the ladies don't have you know don't show yourself like cover up. Wear a suit jacket. Be real or a nice nice dress. Be really professional. Um, because I think that shows power, you know, like when you come in and you're, you're looking really professional. Um, and then, you know, it's showtime. So it's like, I'm a great agent. I'm a great agent. I'm going to get this listing positive affirmations because it is really, you're, you will have that pit in your stomach when you go up to a seller's door for the first time. Don't you? You still do today, don't you? Ooh. Yeah. So, all right. So we're here. I'm going to walk in. Hi, Tommy. So good to meet hey, you. Nice Thank to meet you, you so much for having me out to your property. Yeah. I'm really excited about getting it on the market, but more importantly, this time helping you get it sold. Great. Do you mind if I take a quick look around? I'm going to make some notes. No, not at all. You mean to escort you around? You're going to walk, look around it's, yourself? It's up to you. Yeah. You know, you're not going to be here when you're escorting or when agents are in your property. Okay. So if you'd like, I can go through and kind of look. At, you know, look at it through the eyes of the buyer. Okay. And then if we decide to list, you can kind of walk me around and show me the finer points. Sound good? Yeah, that sounds fine. Awesome. Thanks. Perfect. So then I walk around the home. I used to do that a lot. Now, sometimes I just, you know, will walk around. It depends on the vibe the seller is mm -hmm. giving you. But what happens is when they walk you around, they, they're selling themselves back on that property again. I did this and th they're just adding all these dollar signs. So when I go through and it's unemotional, number one, it saves me a lot of time. Um, I think some agents feel like that's the time where you're building rapport. And I do agree, and I've done it both ways, but I think just feel it out. Um, every seller is different. So, all right. Well, let's see here. So, Tommy, thanks again. Um, did you have a moment to review the package that I emailed you? Yeah, last I did. Night? It looked great. Perfect, perfect. Well, I'm, I'm excited that you, you looked at it. So I've actually, I've wrote down many, many questions. Mm -hmm. um, and I want to make sure I do a really thorough job for you because my goal is to get you across the finish line this time. I know okay. that you, you didn't imagine yourself being here interviewing three agents yeah. at this point, right? So, yep. so I'd like to reunite you with your wife and give you the best information I can. Okay. okay. So I wrote down three really important questions for you. Number one, do you absolutely have to sell this home? Or are there other options for you at this time? Possibly other options, but I would say we have to sell. Okay, perfect, perfect. And then will you price your home to sell or do you mind if it sits on the market for an extended period of time again? Well, definitely we wanted to sell. I thought I was gonna sell the first time around mm -hmm. um, and it sat on the market as you saw. Mm -hmm. um, but I still would like to get that price. You know, I think that this market is still great from what I've seen, mm -hmm. so. Yeah, yeah, okay, perfect. And then do you want me to handle the sale for you based on what you've seen? Um, well, based on our conversation on the phone and the email packet you sent over, I mean, I, you know, it's tough to say. I've got one other agent and between the three of you, I think I can definitely go with one of you. Perfect, perfect, well, that's fair. And I wanna earn your business today, that's for sure. So at the end of my presentation, Typically, one of three things happens. Number one, you'll have the opportunity to go ahead and, and get me started because I'm ready and I actually have buyers waiting um, to see this property. Okay. 
okay? Number two, you may decide not to list your home with me. And number three, I may decide that I can't take this listing. Now, do you know why I wouldn't take your listing? Uh, no, why would that be? So the only reason would be if I believe that the price that you have to have and what the market will bear is, is too much of a divide. Okay. So, so I'm not one of these agents that's just gonna take your listing over price and then beat you up on the price week after week after week. It's just not fun for you. It's definitely not fun for me. So, okay. so I will give you the truth today. Will you allow that? Absolutely. Awesome. Awesome. Well, let's just take a quick moment and review the questions that I asked you. So you definitely said you're moving to Florida to be back with your wife. Mm -hmm. um, job transfer for her is why you're, you're leaving this amazing house. Um, you wanted to be there by September, but the sooner the better, right? Yeah. Okay. And you said you owe 400,000 on the property. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then you were not planning on selling it yourself and you wanted to cash out of it. You don't want to That's rent right. it to somebody else. No. Okay, awesome. Well, there's really only two issues that we look at when we list and sell property in today's market or even back in 08 when the market was bad, mm -hmm. okay? There's really only two issues. Number one is your motivation to sell this home. And number two is the price that we pick as a team based on the market statistics. Okay. And those are the only two issues in real estate. So I've prepared what I call a market absorption analysis and there's two parts to the research, okay? Part one, we jokingly call fantasy land. And that's where some real estate agents will price homes and they never sell. And these are called expired listings. Mm -hmm. There are many of them. Yep. Part two is called reality. And that's what professional agents list and sell homes for. So that's where we want to focus today is to get you to reality so you could get the job done and, and get to the goal of being reunited with your wife, okay? We have to decide today where, where do you want to spend your time? Because you're in charge. I'm yeah. here to bring the information, but know okay. that you are in charge. Um, the purpose of this for me is to determine the value of your home in the eyes of all the buyers, not your eyes or mine, because mm -hmm. I would like to list it for 675 and yeah. I'm sure you'd like that too, Absolutely. right? But we just can't because mm -hmm. we're not going to get the job done. Yeah. So we've got to figure out how do buyers determine value? Okay. How would you say a buyer determines value? Let's say you're shopping in Florida for your new home. Yeah. Are you going to look at one or several? No, we looked at a ton mm -hmm. and, um, you know, put a few offers in, lost a few, but we mm -hmm. did find a pretty good place. Good. So, good. so they're going to comparison shop, right. right? Yep. So they're going to look at same thing here, features and benefits of your home versus the features and benefits of every other home in their price range. And they're going to decide which one is a clear choice. When mm -hmm. I walk in, price, condition, boom, it's got to hit them like a wall and they go, I'm ready to buy. And that's really the, that's what we're trying to get here. Um, I use this example and this really rings true. I saw you had a really nice BMW in your, in your car. That's not mm -hmm. staying with the house, is it? No. Darn. Okay. Cause I could really sell it faster if you nice. need it. <laughs> um, so let's say we're going to go BMW shopping today. Okay. And we've got a $75,000 budget. We go to dealership A, we find a perfect BMW, but you're not sold yet. You want to see, you know, you want to yeah. de deal hunt. So we go to dealership B. There's another BMW. It's exactly the same. It's $75,000, except this dealer is going to throw in a moonroof, a fancy upgraded navigation, and the fanciest wheels. Mm -hmm. For the same price, which one's the best value? The upgrades. A or B? The upgrades, yep. right? Because mm -hmm. you're getting something. Yep. Now, what if dealership A said, hey, we're going through COVID, we got to get this home or this car off the lot, and we're going to lower it to, you know, 55000 today. Yeah. Which one would the you cheaper. pick? I can do without the other stuff. Right? And me too. For 20000 I think we get some pretty nice things yeah. added to the car. Mm -hmm. So same thing in real estate. You know, a buyer's going to look at features and benefits, and even though you have some upgrades, if they can find a better deal somewhere, mm -hmm. they might be willing to give up your upgrades for a, a home that doesn't have those if they feel that's a better deal, yeah. right? So if we have those upgrades and we use them as bait, right? Those shiny objects and we price our home the same as others mm -hmm. and we have more than they have, who's the clear choice then? Yeah, I mean the one with more value. We are, right, yeah. exactly. And that's the goal today. So um, so let me show you what I mean here. This is your home, okay? And, and how many, um, what's the square footage there? Yeah, almost 3,500, so a little yep. under that. And you think that's accurate, right? Because we do have to get it measured, but mm -hmm. you already had it measured. Okay, so 3,441, and how many bedrooms and baths? Yep, four bed, three full bath, yep. one and, half. And you've got your point three five acres, mm -hmm. right? And yep. you had it listed at 575. You said your last agent um, helped you list it there. That's okay. right, and they did, I mean, they said it was would sell. They did a lot of research going into mm -hmm. it. And it did not sell. Yeah. And I'm sure they did the best they could with the information they had, right? Mm -hmm. We all we all read information differently. 
Yeah. yeah. I mean, they said it was going to be maybe slower going because of COVID. So. Mm, okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, and then I know that you have the, the HVAC and the stone paper patio, which is beautiful. Um, you, you mentioned, you know, when we first talked that initial time, I remember that you had some complaints about the garage because when you pull into your garage, yeah. you have to walk up a, a second flight of stairs to get to the main level yeah. living. I mean, it's not many stairs. I mean, it was only a few people that said something about it. It's never really been an issue for us. Mm -hmm. I mean, the kids, I mean, they're up and down those things, you know, yeah. all the time. So it wasn't really an issue for us. Yeah, yeah. And I've sold homes like this many, many times. So that's what we have here to bring to market, okay? Now I wanna show you um, what other agents are gonna be showing in the market right now, active and available, um, homes that are pending and homes that are under contract, okay? okay? Or I mean, homes that have closed. So this property right here, I think this is a, a really good example to look at. So this one on Jess Lee Drive, um, look at what it's listed for. Yeah, it's pretty low. 530,000, right? Mm -hmm. And you can see that it's 3,100 square feet. So it's smaller than your home. Yeah. But I've been in this house and it is like new. I mean, it is beautiful inside. But look at how many days on market. Yeah, 41. 41 days. So what do you think the market is telling this seller about their mm. price? I mean, it possibly could be overpriced. Uh, could be, yeah, that would probably be my, I guess my only guess there. Yeah, well, they're asking 170 a foot. And I think you noticed in your package, and I, I forgot to print it out, um, here here we've got the average in the neighborhood mm -hmm. is $145 a foot here in Lockmere, okay? okay? So typically you'd get a four bedroom, three and a half bath, 3,500 square feet, and 145 is the average. So you okay. can see at 170, yeah. they've kind of, you know, they, they thought that their improvements and the beauty of their home and yeah. the jewels, the extras, would bring them any any price. And we know that right now, it, this home is helping the competition sell. Okay, so we definitely don't wanna be there. This is more fantasy land. Okay. So, but this is good for us. This is actually good news. Okay, so we'll move on from that. Um, all right, part two, we've got another active here. Look at how many days on market. Yeah, not many. Yep, eight days. And what's the list price of that one? 510. 510, now this one overlooks the golf course. And it's got an HVAC replaced, new roof. It's beautiful. And look at how much per foot. Yeah. 149. Yep. Yep. I, I called this agent and they have multiple offers on that property. Oh, well, already? Already, right? So they're they're moving. They're, they're going to get to their goal. And this house, look at how big it is. What does that say there? Yeah, almost identical. A little over, you know, 3,400 square feet. Right, right. So four bedroom, three and a half baths, 149 a foot, 510. Um, but she said multiple offers and above asking. So that one may end up at 520, okay? And so that, that seller is gonna definitely mm -hmm. um, beat out this seller here yeah. at 530, smaller, more expensive per foot. Definitely a nicer house over here, but the buyers look what they're picking because they see a better deal, right? Now these are the two that closed. And I think that we, we also need to pay attention to these comps, but they're older. You know, the, the good news for you is Buyers don't really know about this until they've decided to make an offer. They're just looking at actives. Mm -hmm. So most agents, these agents that keep bringing you comps of sold properties, I don't even care about those. Those are old news. Okay. We need new news. I need to know what's active today. How is your home going to stack up with the active competitors that we're up against? Okay. So we're not going to make that mistake and focus on clothes, but let's just look because obviously we have to get an appraisal done. Now this house here on Deer Park, you can see that it was... Uh, 3890 square feet yeah. yeah sold in zero days for 550 mm -hmm. and it was what per foot yeah 140 yeah One. 141 141 now this one had a pool so it had a really flat lot and their garage you just pulled right into the garage and I've been in this house it's a beautiful house so I think for me if I'm comparing, and again, you want my honest opinion, yeah. I think this one is, it was a better house just because of the pool and a few extra amenities and that it was much bigger yeah. and updated. So I think a buyer, when they decide to make an offer on your home, are still going to have this opportunity to look at the information and decide which one's better. So that one was a little better. Now this one I think is, is very similar to yours. It's a tiny bit smaller. Um, and I think we're a touch better than this one, but, but this one also is under contract right now. Um, pending, and you can see they started at 525, mm. and they're 153 a foot. And the agent said that they also have multiple offers. So, so Tommy, after reviewing all of this, okay, all of this data, 
what do you feel a buyer, I mean, what do you think they're actually going to pay for your home and, and see value in your home versus kind of the competition that's out there today? I mean, it seems like, you know, from what you're telling me, I mean, it is concerning basically to be prepared for a low ball offer. Um, it seems like the market is down based on these numbers. Yeah. Well, I, I don't know that the market's down. I mean, the good news is that we're still selling a ton of homes. In okay. fact, last, in the last seven days, we've sold 900 homes in Raleigh. Okay. That's a lot, yeah. right? So homes are selling, but there's also a lot of homes not selling. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, there's going to be ebbs and flow in the inventory. The reality is you and me as partners, as a team, have to pick the right price to make sure that when we come to market this time, our home and the, the jewels of your home are gonna be looked at as a clear choice. Mm -hmm. And so when I ran the numbers on your property, um, to get you down to 525 puts you right in line with price per square foot. And actually mm -hmm. I have a calculator and I could do that number right now, but I don't. Um, what's, what's, what's 525 divided by uh, 3441, Pam? We don't we don't interrupt the uh, divided by what? Five, uh, three four four one. I think it's like one fifty one. One fifty two. One fifty two. Okay, so so basically, if we if we don't completely give away the farm, right? Mm -hmm. One forty five a foot. I think you're better than the average, and we know okay. the average in this neighborhood is one forty five a foot. Yeah. So we we start in the one fifties because we want to leave some room for negotiation. But what we don't want to do is leave so much room where you're you're doing this again. Yeah. You know, you've got you've got a high price and, and nobody's even willing to go down that low. Mm -hmm. So, Tommy, I'm going to make a recommendation based on the, the history and the data that you come to market at five two five. We get the home staged and prepped with my stagers and then we get you under contract in the first two weeks which puts you still about 45 days out. That still yeah. doesn't get you to Florida till August 15th. And that's if we do everything right. So you, you can see that if we get it wrong. Yeah. I mean, the last agent said at 575, we probably could do the same thing, you know, an mm -hmm. offer in two weeks. And we didn't, yeah. you know, we didn't see any offers. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, you didn't have many showings, you said either. Yeah. Yeah. So, I, I mean, again, I... I could relist the property at 575 and we're going to have the same result. Mm. So at this point, you've got to get it down to where a buyer is going to see the value and they're also going to have justifiable data because unless you and I can come up with 575 and $168 a foot valuation and show yeah. them that. Um, I mean, this is, you know, I certainly appreciate your time. Um, I probably just want to talk it over with my wife later this evening mm -hmm. and then you know late this afternoon we do have the other agent coming by and Absolutely. i can probably let you know in the next day or two yeah no that's perfect well let's go back to to the pricing real quick because i really want to have an open honest conversation because i know when we talked yeah. originally um you said your wife has ch checked out completely and you were making yeah. all the decisions mm -hmm. um because she had to go right yeah so i, I mean, definitely just want to run it by her yeah you know? definitely and in fact i'd love to get her on the phone and we could do it together at some point uh, but I just wanted to go back to pricing. I mean, where are you at in your mind with with pricing? I mean, are you comfortable at the 525 valuation? Not really, in all honesty. And, you know, the other agents quoted a price over the phone. They, they told me what they thought they could list the home for and get it sold for. Right. So I feel pretty comfortable with that. It was a lot higher than the 525. Yeah. So yeah. just to be honest with you. Yeah, no. And I think a lot of agents like to buy listings too, you know, and then again, the strategy is beat them up on price, kind of like this one. Um, you know, when we go back to the one that was at 170 a foot, you know, that agent listed it really high. And yeah. so the trouble that that's going to cause for that house is they're going to have to lower the price and then they're going to have to, you know, chase the market and, and try to be a shining star. And it's just never going to happen because the excitement is over after the first two or three yeah. weeks, if that makes sense. Well, you mentioned a stager and a photographer. Yeah. What does that cost me? Uh, it doesn't cost you anything. It's just part of um, what we do. So the first thing we would do is, is, you know, have you talked to your wife about price? I think it's very, very um, uncomfortable moving forward without all of you being mm -hmm. a team. And, yeah. and so what I'd like to do is actually schedule a time where the three of us could get together. Now that I know it's a little more important um, to have her involved. Okay. Um, so if we could do that, maybe, I know you said you have an appointment at five. Yeah. Maybe we could get on the phone with her at seven, do a Zoom call tonight. Okay. Um, and then we'll go over these exact comps with her and we'll kind of come together as a team. I would list your home higher. It, again, you guys are in charge, but I also want you guys to pick the right strategy. And so just know that it's not, it must be this. It's just that I want you guys knowing that if we list it higher, we have some hurdles. 
and we could be in the same boat yeah. two months from now, and we just don't want to do that. So yeah, that makes sense. What is your commission? Yes. Just a standard 6%. And so the neat thing about my fee, you're going to see a lot of agents that want to charge you lower. Um, but my fee is structured as a 3-3. Three, three. So we actually offer 3% to the buying agent. Most agents are going to keep that on their side, on the list side. But we kind of use that as bait because we know that most agents sell four homes a year. Mm -hmm. So if the agent's making a little bit more on our listings, they're going to sell our listings better. Okay. okay. And so, and then that includes our stager and professional photography and all of that stuff combined. Okay. Okay. All right. It's definitely something to think about. I Perfect. appreciate it. Perfect. So, well, I'm excited to get back on the phone with your wife at seven uh, tonight, and then we'll go ahead and, and get that done. Now I've got all the paperwork here. And mm -hmm. so, you know, I've got everything filled out. And so we can definitely take a few moments if you'd like, and I can kind of show you what we do as far as, um, you know, the, the paperwork and, you know, that way you can talk to your wife and we can get you going. Uh, the listing agreement? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, if you'd like to go over it right now. Yeah. Yeah. That'll be fine. Okay, good. I probably wouldn't force them to do that, but you yeah. know, we, and this scenario, he threw a curveball that no one's ever going to, you're not going to get this guy to sign a listing contract with his wife, not in the picture and not here. So I think that that's how I would have handled it is try to get in front of the wife instead of leaving it up to him to go talk to her about it. So I would have probably left that appointment with another appointment to meet the wife at seven after his next agent. But she already had it filled out. So that mm -hmm. was a good thing. And then, yeah. you know, I would have signed it. Yeah. So. And I probably then would have gone through the listing agreement and then, you know, definitely left the price maybe up in the air a little bit. Again, they're all not slam dunks, but I think that, you know, you threw that little curveball, so I was like, "Oh boy, now we're not gonna, we're not gonna get there." But there's always tons of curveballs. I mean, I've been on, many, yeah. you know, listing presentations with other agents and stuff, and I mean, it's one thing after another. It's never, "Oh, let me sign, let me sign, let me sign." Let me sign. sign. So, yeah. Now, if he would have said, "I agree on the pricing," and let's let's do it this way. Let's say yeah. you agreed on the pricing. So, do you agree? On, at, you know, five twenty-five is probably the best price that we need to blah 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 blah. Yeah, I mean, okay. yeah, gotta go lower this time. And then give me the I want to think it over objection. And I mean, I'll think it over just to make sure that I'm on the same page as you with the lower price. Perfect. Perfect. Well, I do want you to think it over. I mean, I've got everything filled out here today, Tommy. I think you, you and I both agree that 525 is the price, right? Yeah, unfortunately. I know. I know. And we'll, we'll try to get you above that. And I think, do you feel comfortable and confident that myself and, and my group can sell the home? Yeah, I do. Okay, perfect. Well, then why don't we do this? And I really wouldn't mind. Let's just go through this so because we're face to face and then I can answer all of your questions on the listing agreement right now. Okay. Um, and kind of show you some of the hurdles that we might need to get through with negotiations. And that way we're all, you know, on the same page. And then you can interview that agent. And then tomorrow morning, I'll call you first thing. And okay. if you hire that other agent, I will, I will rip this agreement up and mail it back to you. Okay. But if you say yes, then what I'll do is get started because I'm, I want to get my team on this and show you that I'm an aggressive agent that's going to get the home sold. Sound good? Awesome. Yeah. Perfect. So that might be another close if he's ready to go. I'm and I've used that. I got my first listing agreement signed. Mark, um, what's his last name? Anyway, Mark. Um, by using by using that close, he was like, okay, well I'll do that. And then and then before I left, he said, you know what? Let's just do this because he had already committed. He already committed. He signed. He was ready to go. Once you get their commitment, um, but sometimes they just want to think it over, and and you do want to. It's sometimes you feel like it is uncomfortable to ask for that extra push, but it's that discomfort that you know stops you. And potentially he's just as uncomfortable, and everyone wants to get it over with. So you know people just want to be done. And most of the time, I was dealing with sellers that were expired and fisbo. I wasn't dealing with hey, come and list my home because you listed my friend's home. Those are referrals. You don't have to be as aggressive on the referral people. Um, but the FISBOs and expireds, it's you against two other agents. And if you've got 10 grand on the line and you got to feed your family, you're going to have to come up with different objection handlers to get through that, that appointment. So any questions? What's the follow-up like? So you don't get the appointment. Yeah. You don't get the signatures right away. So, how so then I would, I would always end with when are we going to touch base again? So, all right, Tommy, so you're going to interview that agent tomorrow or today at five, mm -hmm. you know, is it okay if I just touch base with you tomorrow at 10 and see if you have any other questions? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So it just another touch point. He might say, well, no, I need till Saturday, you know, and 
and I need to really think about this Saturday. Great, would, would you mind if I followed up? I wanna demonstrate my follow-up skills to you that you know, I'm gonna put you in my calendar. Can I follow up with you um, for a professional call on, on Saturday? Whatever it is, just keep demonstrating that you're aggressive and this is how you're gonna treat a buyer. And so that's what they wanna see. If you're aggressive with them, they want an aggressive salesperson when they're selling their home. They don't want to be friends. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's the, the thing that we all think, oh, they wanna be friends and I have to be nice. Well, it's a lot of money on the line. And so I don't wanna be friends with my realtor. I want them to be a shark and I want them to sell my home. You know, so um, that's just my style. I mean, every style works. It's just for me, I, I needed to get that appointment and get it closed and get to the table. Today, I'm a little less, I mean, I, my um, appointment ratio, I would get 85% of the listings I went on now, it, then it dropped to 72% when I didn't do it this way. Mm -hmm. So see the difference? Because I was lazy and I didn't want to go through the contract and I didn't want to be there very long. And so I just wanted to go and hope they picked me. And then they would pick April. And then I'd go, oh, they picked April. Darn it. At least they picked April. <laughs> and not a new agent for 4%. <laughs> <laughs> so, right? So any questions on that? Yeah, Patty. Um, objection from Tommy comes back higher than Oh, wait, say that again? Tommy comes back, he says. Oh, it, commission's higher. higher. Okay. Well, then I might use a different close. I might say, um, you know, he might say, well, would you lower it to 5%? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, um, Tommy, you know, I would love to do that. But let me ask you a quick question. I know we settled on 525, right? Yeah. Would you lower your house to 500 so we could sell it faster? No, not at all. Well, why not? I mean, I'm just not going to lower the price anymore. I mean, it's tough at this price already, so I can't go lower than yeah. that. Yeah, and it's worth more. Yeah. Well, the same with my commission. I know that there's going to be other agents that don't believe in their value, but I believe I'm worth more because I have I have the experience and the, you know, whatever to get your home sold. So, I mean, you might just use that. So, will you lower your price to 500? No. Why? Well, they usually say, well, it's worth more. Well, just like you believe it's worth more, I also believe it's worth more. And a lot of agents don't believe in their work. And so I know I'm going to get the job done. If you say it with conviction, you know, like you might not say I'm a top agent. I, you know, I know I'm going to work hard for you and get the job done. And I'm, I'm worth every bit of that. And that's just, it's just a quick little question in the mind of their, of the seller. That's it. So that's, that was, that's one of my favorites. Um, I mean, there's so many. Mike teaches, no, any other questions? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I never liked that one. <laughs> Just, feels, a little feels a little direct. But if you're really direct, and, like Marty Hampton, no, any other questions? Will you learn commission? No, right? Mm -hmm. She wasn't beating around the bush. So. She didn't have to, but I feel like these days we do have to do just a little bit more. Just a little bit more. We gotta do the dance. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because you're getting agents that are four and a half, you know? And so, you know, at the end of the day, I mean, my feeling with commission too is, yeah, you want, it, you want to try to be as strong as possible, but don't be one of these agents that if you don't get it at 6% every single time, you, you don't want, you know, we're, there's agents out there taking your listings at five and a half and five. I mean, that's just the reality of the nature of the business. So, you know, get your, get your feet wet and take the listing and, you know, just do the best you can with the seller. But what I love about this too is that there's not some crazy marketing piece that has, you know, that you feel like you need to have a prop there. It's no. just comps, it's confidence, it's the yeah. ability that you can do it. I think new agents get caught up in, I need a really fancy listing presentation. I need all this fluff. Yeah, you don't need fluff. You just got comps and that's pretty much it. I came with their comps and I had like three sheets when I first moved here. I put my lender, my the title people, the attorney, and my inspector, that was my team. So that's my team. And so I would put their little faces on my, my, you know, and then that was it. And this is my team that I work with. Mm -hmm. And so you can have, you can spin it any way. If I'm a brand new agent, I'm going up against April. Well, April's just, you know, she's going to treat you like a number. I mean, she's got all these people to deal with and all these sellers. She can't even possibly give you the attention that I can. I'm going to spend a hundred percent of my time trying to sell your home. They love to hear that. Now my answer is going to be the opposite, right? Why would you want to hire a new agent? They're going to take this $600,000 asset and practice on you. Like, of course they're doing it at a discount, but would you go up to a court case if you were being sued for 650,000 and look in the, you know, the yellow pages and find the cheapest attorney out there? No, you're going to find the best attorney to represent you. So you can spin it any way you want and you might get lucky. So 
I mean, that's what I would say about Marty Hampton. She come into the listing appointment? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Marty, if you're listening. <laughs> but I mean, you can spin it any which way um, to, to make it better for you, so. Well, and just to add to a little bit of what Pam said, I, I was the same way. I worry so much, and I do. I have a fantastic 17-page PowerPoint yeah. presentation. <laughs> and I also, I also have yeah. one sheet, and I give people the option. Would you like the one sheet, which literally just has some infographics on it right. and our information, or I have a 17-page PowerPoint presentation. I'd love to go through with you, and they look at you like, please don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. And analyticals might go, Yes. Oh, your engineers are like, can we? And I'm like, oh, they brought a spreadsheet for you. It's not pulling up. I can't get it yeah. to pull up. <laughs> yeah. And they're like, can I take notes during your presentation? Oh, yes, you can. And then they'll find a misspelled word in your presentation. Those are the worst. So, yeah, engineer clients want all the info, and they're going to go through. I found that the very high analyticals would go through the package, and then they'd ask you a question. Well, you said there's a $75 cancellation fee. I'm like, yes. Like, oh yeah, oh yeah, that's old now. You know, like they're literally reading everything you give them. And then the high Ds want to get to the point, you know, they just want to, yeah, one sheet, just get to it. What's the price, lady? I mean, and you, and sometimes you got to speed it up. Like sometimes I would be with this presentation. I'm like, I'm going to skip the whole car analogy thing. We're just going to go right into it because they want the meat and potatoes. So you will start to sense that as you know who you're talking to. But on the phone, that was the other reason for the prequel. If he or she, whoever I was talking to, was a high I, I was like, oh my God, I can't wait for you to see my home and I just painted it and it's so beautiful and I have these flowers in the garden and oh, I hope the new buyer loves my home and I want to write a letter and I'm just like, oh God, this is going to take long. This is an expressive and I'm going to have to go on emotion and, and be that person they need me to be versus an analytical doctor who's like, it's three bedrooms, four bath, my square footage of my lot is this and you're like, oh boy, let me bring that person numbers. So it just helps me assess who I'm in front of um, for my stage presentation. When you asked, I love that you also ask about the improvements and upgrades because I think that's probably one of the biggest questions you can ask. And then I also ask them, can you put a dollar value by that for me? Mm. Because they went ahead and told you how much they just added on to their house and when they bought it. They just yes. told you what they think. Yes, so it's worth more. Because I put a new roof, so that's at least 25000 Because every home doesn't need a roof that... <laughs> doesn't leak <laughs> it's a new route that's great you know I, I no I didn't get it this time but that was that was more realistic he threw a curveball he didn't even listen to the role play he was like give me the listing I did we you have the paperwork you got, she had the paperwork already I just needed to run it by my wife I'm gonna get it tonight at seven and, nine. and and really the other thing is my coach would say your, your, if you don't get that signature, your chances of getting that listing go down 75% when you walk out the door because they're excited in the heat of the moment. They might love you and they're like, wow, that was a great, and their emotions high. And if you don't take advantage of that and get them to sign some way, somehow, or commit, then the next day they're going to talk to Sally Sue in the yard and go, well, my niece does it for, with Redfin and she's a shield. They'll do it for 3%. You should don't go full price, you know, and then all of a sudden Sally Susie forgets you and the excitement of that moment of you being the professional, it's just over. And so that's when you get the, they never call you back. They're not picking up the phone. You're like, man, what did I do? It's half the time. I don't get the ones that I think are going to be slam dunks. And the ones that I think I failed on, they're like, we're ready. I'm like, oh, okay, mm -hmm. okay. So, I mean, it's just hit or miss. You just have to do it in high volume. Mm -hmm. If you go do that, your goal is to get in front of one seller every single day, every single day. You'll just get better, so. I haven't right? been on two that are the same by any means. I mean, they're all over the board. Mm -hmm. They're all different, they're all different. Have you been on two? <laughs> hey, well, then I'm batting 50% because I got one door knocking. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah. But I mean, that's the thing. It's like, you're never going to get all the listings. You're just not going to get them. I've, I've never met one agent and I'm ta and I've been around some amazing machine agents. Um, Josh Barker in California, he takes 370 listings a year, write that name down and watch his YouTube videos. He's not going to find many of them, but he's a machine. And so even he's at batting at 85%. He's just not going to get every listing. So for whatever, they don't like the color of your shoes. You're just not getting it. So you just got to, Josh Barker, he's in Redding, R-E-D-D-I-N-G, California. Um, he does some really cool, but he's a high, high D, low on emotion, just follows the scripts to a T kind of guy. Yeah, yeah, but you know, just, I, th I think just get out there, 
you know, be uncomfortable, learn the script, you know, learning the scripts is the hardest thing for me. When I first got these, I was like, yeah, this doesn't sound like me. Like there's only two issues we have to look at tonight. Number one, your motivation to sell When you're reading it, it doesn't sound like you. And so then you might not want to say it, but if you start to, you know, internalize it, then it's like, Hey, there's only two things we need to look at today. Your motivation to sell and the price that we put on your home. It sounds completely different because it's me saying it because I know it now. Um, so do you have a question for me? Do you ask who the other agents are? Sometimes, yeah, yeah. A lot of times I'll say, well, who are you interviewing? Or how did you happen to find those agents? Oh, well, a friend, and, oh, well, who are they? I'll bring a report card because I have access to everyone's report card. And then I'll know if it's Marty Hampton and April Stevens. And then I'll know that I'm going up against two great agents and I'll have to figure out like, well, this listing's in Cary, April's in Joko. So now I'm gonna, right? So we, because we're salespeople, at the end of the day, we, we all do that, right? I mean, we love each other, but we're all in business and we wanna win the listing or the business. Just like when you're up with a buyer and you're meeting a buyer, it's like you're trying to give that buyer the competitive advantage of why they should work with you, right? And you're brand new. Yes. So if you learn this, you're gonna have a much better advantage even with seasoned agents that go into listing appointments because you're gonna come out very professional immediately, right? So, yeah. Steve has a question. It says, how do you handle the flat fee agency? Um, it just depends. You know, sometimes you'll bring a flat fee. So there's a flat fee agent right now. Um, he listed 500 homes. He sold half of them. It's a, I mean, that's, and really I always say, well, you know, a flat fee agent, I could have went that route, but do you think that flat fee agents are top of their game or probably the people that didn't make it in the industry? Probably discount. This, you're right, they just didn't make it in the industry. Yeah. So, you know, I could have easily went the flat fee route, but the reality is a flat fee broker, see, they want your listing at a discount. And then what's going to happen is they're going to put the sign in your yard and guess how many buyers they're going to sell on that sign if your home doesn't sell. Yeah, probably a ton. They're going to get call after call after call. So in our market, that's $8,000 a deal. Eight times five, it's a lot of money. So really, they're giving you a discount to use your listing as advertisement. That's a great response because that's what they do. They hope it doesn't. They hope it doesn't sell. Doesn't sell. And then you bring stats of a, a top flat fee agent, and they're they're not selling a lot. They're selling some, but they're not selling a lot. So. Well, when you get into repair negotiations and appraisal negotiations with a flat fee agent, they are not nearly as trained in negotiations as you are because they do everything for a discount. Mm -hmm. So why aren't they going to discount your home? Exactly. Yeah. You just don't care. But I love the. I love the, the thought of, um, you know, what like Redfin agents, flat fee agents. Do you think these agents are top of their game or the people that didn't make it? Like nobody wants to go with the losers. Sorry. I mean, it's just the reality. I don't want to go hire the agent that couldn't make it in the business. So, so yeah. And then as you get more and more confident and more sales under your belt, then you can use the, um, you know, the average agent sells four homes. If you've sold, two times that, three times that. You could say, I've sold three times the national average. They don't need to know that the average is four and you sold three times four. I mean, they just need to know that you sold three times the national average. You've got to figure out how to spin your stats. <laughs> spin that stat, right? So, yeah. I think one of the biggest takeaways for me from what you did was really focusing more on active comps than sold comps because that's not how any of us were trained. Let's be no, honest. And no. so I was just sitting here thinking like that's not what anybody else is doing. I feel like, and that's what the buyer wants, to, or that's what the seller wants to hear because they want to know how they're competing in this market. They right. Get so good. Right. right. And if we're looking at stuff that sold six months ago. That's that house is gone. You are not competing with that listing. Right. So it's old news to me. And I always had that mindset like. If I pick, if I take this product to market today, I'm going to look at everything on the market and go, am I beating them? If I price it here, like this is my baby now. <clears throat> so, so if I've got three listings in the same neighborhood, I'm like, I'd pick that one over this that you're just about to list at that price. That is a wrong price. So the seller needs to also understand which house would you pick if your home was stacked up against these, the buyer does not know the closed sales. They do not until they're ready to go make an offer. But how do they make a decision to make an offer? Well, they go look at all the actives and then decide which one's the best value. So mm -hmm. I always, yeah, focus on actives for sure. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, that makes sense. It made sense to me. Mm -hmm. So um, how about you all in there? In, <laughs> in the box. In the box. Anybody got questions? I just had the one from Lee. I like the best about Josh Barker. Josh Barker, okay, good. Let me see if I get some more. 
I know. I mean, just I want to make sure we don't ignore y'all. Just sitting there behaving. Yeah. So, anything else? Zillow stats. Zillow stats it says my house is worth the estimate. So I always use the example of my own home, or I always have an example ready. So, well, Zillow does say a lot of things, but Zillow doesn't go into houses, and Zillow is not a realtor. So let me give you a quick example. One day, my home was worth $100,000 more than Zillow said, and that was the day that I wished I would have sold it. But the next day, it was worth $100,000 less. So Zillow says a lot of things, but Zillow doesn't sell homes. Um, you can also say that, you know, I had a seller that, um, their home was listed for six ninety five on Zillow. We listed it for four ninety five, which is true, and that was because it was pulling the million dollar neighborhood averages around it. And so, imagine if I would have listed that poor guy's house at six ninety five. Well, we all know he's not going to get that. So, I mean, you just want to use a quick example to get him off there. Zillow says um, the Marquetas were Zillow says. Yeah. So there's a client of mine that I let them list what Zillow said and they didn't list my price. Now we're going to be below our price I'll two offers Zillow later. Come up with, Zillow doesn't show up to buy it either. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's a great comment. Yeah. Let's call Zillow and see if they'll buy it at that price because they do buy homes. They ain't buying. They're not buying what you're selling. So. Anything else? Yeah. yeah. Awesome as usual. Yeah, yeah. I hope so. Took a page all night. Oh, good. <laughs> good, good, good. Cool. Well, thanks, y'all. Coming. Yes, we are recording on Tuesday. Yeah. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. I'm going to do it this way. I know, right? Yeah.